What I purpose in the following papers is to give a plain and distinct account of the steps by which I was led, during a course of many years, to embrace the doctrine of Christian perfection. This I owe to the serious part of mankind, those who desire to know all the truth as it is in Jesus. And these only are concerned in questions of this kind. To these I would nakedly declare the thing as it is, endeavoring all along to show from one period to another both what I thought and why I thought so. In the year 1725, being in the twenty-third year of my age, I met with Bishop Taylor's Rule and Exercises of Holy Living and Dying. In reading several parts of this book, I was exceedingly affected, that part in particular which relates to purity of intention. Instantly, I resolved to dedicate all my life to God, all my thoughts and words and actions, being thoroughly convinced there was no medium, but that every part of my life, not some only, must either be a sacrifice to God or myself, that is, in effect, to the devil. Can any serious person doubt this or find a medium between serving God and serving the devil? In the year 1726, I met with Kempis's Christian's Pattern. The nature and extent of inward religion, the religion of the heart, now appeared to me in a stronger light than ever it had done before. I saw that giving even all my life to God, supposing it possible to do this, and go no farther would profit me nothing unless I gave my heart, yea, all my heart, to Him. I saw that simplicity of intention and purity of affection, one design in all we speak or do, and one desire ruling all our tempers, are indeed the wings of the soul, without which she can never ascend to the mount of God. A year or two after, Mr. Law's Christian perfection and serious call were put into my hands. These convinced me more than ever of the absolute impossibility of being half a Christian, and I determined through His grace the absolute necessity of which I was deeply sensible of to be all devoted to God, to give Him all my soul, my body, and my substance. Will any considerate man say that this is carrying matter too far, or that anything less is due to Him who has given Himself for us? than to give him ourselves, all we have and all we are? In the year 1729, I began not only to read, but to study the Bible as the one, the only standard of truth, and the only model of pure religion. Hence I saw, in a clearer and clearer light, the indispensable necessity of having the mind which was in Christ, and of walking as Christ also walked, even of having not some part only, but all the mind which was in him and of walking as he walked, not only in many or in most respects, but in all things. And this was the light wherein at this time I generally considered religion as an uniform following of Christ, an entire inward and outward conformity to our Master. Nor was I afraid of anything more than of bending this rule to the experience of myself, or of other men, of allowing myself in any the least disconformity to our grand exemplar. On January 1, 1733, I preached before the university in St. Mary's Church on the circumcision of the heart, an account of which I gave in these words. It is that habitual disposition of soul which, in the sacred writings, is termed holiness, and which directly implies the being cleansed from sin from all filthiness both of flesh and spirit, and by consequence the being endued with those virtues which were in Christ Jesus, the being so renewed in the image of our mind as to be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect. In the same sermon I observed, Love is the fulfilling of the law, the end of the commandment. It is not only the first and great command, but all the commandments in one. Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, they are all comprised in this one word, love. In this is perfection and glory and happiness. The royal law of heaven and earth is this, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. The one perfect good shall be your one ultimate end. One thing shall ye desire for its own sake, the fruition of him who is all in all. Thank you for listening to this sample. 
The full-length audiobook may be purchased exclusively at audible.com, amazon.com, or the iTunes store. For additional Christian audiobooks or to learn how we can narrate your own book, please go to godsounds.com. God Sounds, where faith is heard.